United Airlines Flight 173 was scheduled from John F. Kennedy International Airport in New York to Portland International Airport in Portland, Oregon, with a scheduled stop in Denver, Colorado. The accident occurred on December 28, 1978, and there was about 189 people on board, including crew. The aircraft being used was a Douglas DC-861 with the registration November 8082 uniform. After the landing gear was lowered, there was a loud thump heard by the flight crew. Along with that, they heard unusual sounds, abnormal vibration, abnormal yaw of aircraft, and only two green landing gear indicator lights turned on, which means there was a lack of them being lowered successfully. While the flight crew was trying to figure out what the problem was, they figured they would circle the plane. The right main landing gear retract cylinder assembly failed due to corrosion. There is rapid and abnormal free fall which damaged the micro switch. All of this led the captain to abort landing in order to diagnose the problem. While diagnosing the problem, there was a miscalculation of time and none of the cockpit flight crew monitored fuel le levels effectively which resulted in fuel starvation. The aircraft flew for about an hour while trying to identify the problem and come up with an effective plan. During this time, the fuel levels were not monitored effectively. The gear was down, flaps were at 15 degrees, which increased the fuel burn rate. Engines one and two were lost as crew prepared for a final approach for emergency landing into Portland International Airport due to flame out. The plane eventually crashed into a wooded area around six nautical miles from the airport, which ended up being a suburban Portland neighborhood. There was a total of 10 fatalities, which consisted of eight passengers and two crew members, which included flight attendant Joan Wheeler and flight engineer Forrest Mendenhall. There were about 21 serious injuries. There was a total of 179 survivors. The safety board believes that this accident exemplifies a recurring problem, a breakdown in cockpit management and teamwork during a situation involving malfunctions of aircraft systems in flight. Therefore, the safety board can only conclude that the flight crew failed to relate the fuel remaining and the rate of fuel flow to the time and distance from the airport because their attention was directed almost entirely toward diagnosing the landing gear problem. The National Transportation Safety Board concluded that probable cause was a failure of the captain to monitor properly the aircraft's fuel state and to properly respond to the low fuel state and the crew members' advisories regarding fuel state. This resulted in fuel exhaustion to all engines. His inattention resulted from preoccupation with the landing gear malfunction and preparations for a possible landing emergency. According to the National Transportation Safety Board, a contributing factor was the failure of the other two flight crew members either to fully comprehend the criticality of the fuel state or to successfully communicate their concern to the captain. The National Transportation Safety Board recommendation was issue an operations bulletin to all air carrier operations inspectors directing them to urge their assigned operators to ensure that their flight crews are indoctrinated in principles of flight tech resource management with particular emphasis on the merits of participative management for captains and assertiveness training for other cockpit crew members crew resource management was implemented after this accident United Airlines instituted the aviation industry's first CRM program in 1980. Now there's a crew resource management course mandatory as part of 747 captain course. As you can see in the chart, pilot error has been the main cause of accidents dating back to the 1960s. Pilot error has been a principal benefactor for over 70% of commercial aviation accidents, including those of hull loss. Hull loss is an aviation accident that damages an aircraft to the point where it is beyond economical repair, resulting in total loss. I interviewed Anthony Cedrone, who is a professor at Vaughan College. He teaches safety management system. In the following slides will be his answers from the interview. When asked, what are your opinions on human factors in the aviation industry? He answered, 
My opinion on human factors in aviation is that the human factor weighs greatly in aviation. It is the humans from beginning to end of every flight that makes it safe and successful. From baggage handlers and ticket agents to the flight crew to ATC, humans are involved and responsible for air travel safety. When asked, why do you think human factors make up most accidents or incidents in this field? He answered, as far as why humans make up for most aviation accidents, I believe that because the human mind is very complex and all individuals think differently, it is very difficult to pinpoint what an individual is capable of doing. It is only recently that the aviation industry has focused its attention on the human factor as a cause of accidents. In prior years, almost exclusively, accidents were blamed on a malfunction, like engine failure. We missed the why. Why did the engine fail and how was recovery handled if it was handled at all? Between flight crews and ATC, the percentage attributable to accidents by humans is close to 95%. When asked if he was familiar with the United Airlines Flight 173, he unfortunately was not familiar with it at all. Down to the... Uh... Airspeed bucks, we can witness the fatal combination of the macho type and the non-assertive type in this training film. It's a reconstruction in a simulator using voice transcripts from a serious accident that actually happened to a major airline. Watch out for the way the flight engineer in the seat nearest us and the captain, John, on the left, gang up on the young co-pilot in the front right. They're just about to begin their final descent. Maybe gate 17, John. Oh, good. That's right by that little snack bar. Yeah, good gate. Uh, yeah. Good well, gate. We've got about a half hour on the ground. We can uh, run in there, get something to eat, get the weather, and be on our way to Seattle. Good. A little glide slope there, John. Yeah, well, we know where we are out here. We're all right. Oh, you waited. The fox is going to have it wired. I hope so. Right in. Oh, uh, yeah. No problem. A little faster than you normally fly this, John? Oh, yeah, but it's nice and smooth. We're going to get in right on time, maybe a little bit ahead of time. We got her made. Sure hope so. You know, John, you know the difference between a, a duck and a co-pilot? What is the difference? Well, a duck can fly. Well said. Seems like there's a little bit of a tailwind up here, John. Yeah, we're saving gas. Help us get in a couple minutes early, too. In fact, they're less than eight miles out, going 40 knots too fast and 200 feet too low. John, you're just a little bit below the MDA here. Yeah, well, we'll take care of it here. The captain's answer to being too low is to casually leapfrog the aircraft up over the glide slope in a last minute attempt to correct. It's a fatal maneuver. Just a little bit high. Well, gear down. Final check. No smoking signs. It's on. Flight and nav instruments. They're Left. cross checked. Two degrees. Uh, landing gear. It's down three green. Speed brakes. Really look awful high, John. Uh, Speed five brakes. degrees. Five degrees. Fifteen degrees. 15. Twenty-five on the flaps. Well, John, you're really high. You're going to need forty is what you need here. Get the speed brakes in. this thing down. They're, uh, they're armed. You want the speed brakes on? I don't think you're going to make it, John, if you don't get this sucker on the ground. Get it on, John. You're not going to make it. Go. You're not going to make it. Oh, we're going around. Oh, Some resources include code7700.com, the deadly port and plane crash that changed airline industry by Coin6 News, Anthony Cedrone, professor at Vaughn College, cockpit voice recorder database from tailstrike.com, Portland airliner crash in 1978 killed 10 but changed the way crews are trained by the Oregonian. The NTSB website and YouTube.